On February 2nd, 2014, the world lost a remarkable Jamaican treasure, the voice of Bunny Ruggs. He was not just a phenomenal vocal presence, he was also a bright, funny, warm-hearted man with a loving family, steadfast friends, and legions of adoring fans. In 2013, Third World celebrated 40 years as a band, and I had the esteemed privilege of spending a sunny evening with them, soaking in their brotherhood, listening to the sweet sounds of their harmonies, and basking in the brilliance of Bunny's voice. Decades of images tell the story of a band that has morphed with the times, surviving years, member changes, hardship, and victories. I'd like to share with you our record of the day we spent with Third World and the man, Bunny Ruggs. I came in. Are you ready? What is the record one here? Everybody hold down, play safe. 96 degrees in the shade. It is a rare friendship that truly stands the test of time. But for Third World Band, the last 40 years were only just the beginning. In our conversation with them, you could feel the jovial spirit and camaraderie that keeps this band of brothers so close together. I'm so happy to be here with one of the most legendary bands in reggae music, Third World Band. In all music. In all music. <laughs> our very first question is the name Third World. That name represents the entire developing world. What, what were you thinking when you came up with the name? How did it come about? The name Third World came about the same year the band was born. That's 1973, in the summer of 73. Third World, that was the political climate at the time. We had people like um, Michael Manley, who was coming into power and was changing the whole landscape in Jamaica, where he has having people, black Jamaican people, believing in themselves and getting very self-reliant and making we appreciate what we have and not having to look outside to be impressed anymore. With 40 years of success behind them as a group, we wanted to find out, did they even remember what life was like before Third World? Not really, because I was still in that part. <laughs> I knew Rugs and Richie before I got into Third World. Rugs and myself had been in Inner Circle and Rugs was a bigger person to me, as you can all see. <laughs> but um, Rugs taught me a lot as a kid growing up, being lead singer of Inner Circle. And, um, <laughs> and um, we all had lives growing up along the way that really indicated that somewhere along the line this, this would have happened. For Cat Core, the outgoing guitarist, that life included cello lessons and theatre. Richie's earlier life, like newer members Norris, Ruption and Maurice, included stints with other popular bands. Third World's distinctive lead vocalist, Bunny Ruggs, is often amazed at how versatile he's become throughout the years and credits the awesome talent of the band with keeping him on his toes. I heard that song the other day um, that Third World did <laughs> and when I heard it I said to myself, is that really me? Because what the song was saying and how the song was um, projected, you don't plan, I don't plan stuff like that. I think I'm very fortunate that I'm with a set of musicians that can practically play anything. And because of that, they asked me to sing everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I have to be ready at all times because I don't know what's coming. I mean, that gives me the, the opportunity to be as flexible and as versatile. And I give, tell all young people, just practice and, and don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Thinking back now and looking, looking at how the music industry is nowadays with autotune and iTunes and YouTube, what was it like becoming successful in the music industry at a time when there was not all of that stuff? It's a, it's a completely different journey now. It was less complicated then. <laughs> I mean, is either you could sing or you can't sing. Is either you can play guitar or you can't play guitar. No, this you don't have to really do anything. Good. Out of tune and the machine will do it for you. We embrace it because um, it's useful, it's helpful, but it was much easier, I thought, earlier, in, in the earlier days. Those days you have to prepare yourself. I remember rehearsing a song for about a day before you go and record it. But what was it that set Third World apart and made them an international success? Third World was very fortunate that Third World's music was a little different and it, people would really listen. And I, I don't think we had that difficulty in getting international 
recognition because songs like Now That We Found Love, 96 Degrees, um, Try Your Love, I, I don't see what could stop them. All the musicians at the time, and even now, are very talented. The Boo Cooper, William Stewart, Carrot, Irvin, Jared, Richard Daly, Kat and myself. And the main thing I think is that we really love what we were doing and what we are doing to this day. Really, I enjoy being on stage for that hour and a half. I remember playing with toothache, headache. I remember when we did Sunsplash once with Bob Marley. I, I was sick, I got sick in London and we were performing in Montego Bay and I spent three days in bed and the, music, the rest of the fellows had said, let's cancel the show and I said, no, we have to leave because it was a very important gig. And for that hour and a half on stage, I wasn't sick at all until the last note was played, I got sick again. So, <laughs> no, and it's a serious thing. Um, music and performing is a very powerful thing and People ask you after 40 years how you feel about performing. You get butterflies every time. And I feel that if you don't get that feeling, that feeling of anxiety, pack it up. To wrap up, I tried to find out collectively what was the group's most memorable experience. With six personalities and a 40 year history, that ended up becoming a short list of their top favorites. There been a lot of great times for us, you know. Being with Stevie Wonder is definitely one, recording with him, receiving a platinum record in Japan, going to number two on the Japanese charts. Uh, the, the, chart, the, chart, the charts thing we put on the one. You know, the number two in England, number two in Japan thing. Opening for Bob Marley in England is major because, you know, it was a big launch and signing with Chris Blackwell is a pivotal <laughs> moment in our history. So. We're just touching on it because there have been many other great times like Giant Stadium, Rose Bowl, Wembley Arena. There have been a lot of great times for us, you know. At the end of an interview filled with laughter and high spirits, we went off to enjoy a slew of hits at their live performance. It was, most certainly, a day we will not soon forget. On behalf of everyone I know personally, and all of us at Caribcast.tv and Jamaicans.com, our deepest, most sincere and heartfelt condolences go out to Bunny's wife and children, other family, friends, and his lifelong brothers in reggae, Kat, Richie, Ebo, Carrot, Ruption, Norris, and Maurice. May your voice ring on in our ears. May your music live on in our hearts. Rest well, my friend. You will be missed.